Bula Vinaka Fiji and a warm welcome to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Louise Kaunisella. Today, we'll talk about the security industry. My guest, a uh, licensed security consultant and member of the Security Industry Licensing and Registration Board, Daniel Singh and uh, Simeoni Nakola from the Security Division of the Ministry of Defense and National Security. A warm welcome to the both of you to speak your mind. Lovely. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we are very privileged to be here today on behalf of the board for the Security Industry uh, Licensing and Registration Board and on behalf of the chairperson, who is also the Permanent Secretary of Defense. Uh, so we would like to extend our hearty appreciation for inviting us to this program. You are most welcome and uh, thank you so much for coming to appear on Speak Your Mind. Now, uh, let's get on with it. Uh, now, for me, even uh, I didn't uh, really know about uh, the registration board for, secure, for the security industry, the licensing. So uh, when did the introduction to the Security Industry Act come into play? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Consell. Uh, the Security Industry Decree mm -hmm. um, was endorsed and approved in uh, 2010, Decree number 57 for the purpose of licensing and regulation of persons engaged in the security industry in Fiji. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has now become the Security Industry Act 2010. Okay, and so. is, it is under the Security Industry 2010 yes. that the board gets its powers from to be able to undertake the various responsibilities in regulating the security industry in Fiji. Okay, so uh, like are we looking at... Uh, before 2010, uh, did it actually exist? No, as uh, Simeone has rightly mentioned, mm. uh, the regulations came in place at that time. Oh, so okay. that's uh, under which the uh, Security Industry Licensing and Registration Board has been uh, formed. I and see. Uh, I'm quite privileged to serve in that board. Okay. There's various responsibilities, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we'd like to talk about that a little bit uh, later in the program. Okay, sure. So, what activities come under the Security Industry Act? There's various activities, and I'm pretty sure Simone would like to just take us through the uh, various activities that right. is uh, <coughs> that we manage as part of the board. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Under the master, master license, um, we normally engage um, security um, guards for the like uh, uh, patrolling, protecting, and watching or guarding any any property. Mm -hmm. Act as a bodyguard, um, a venue controller, crowd controller, or even a bouncers. That oh. comes uh, under the uh, master license. Like, uh, for security. security master license. Yeah. It also includes people who are selling security equipment. So mm -hmm. this includes CCTV. <coughs> Uh, okay. sellers and installers now the act also governs that as well so any and any kind of uh, security activities in the private sector that's what this act manages well that's something new for me to know that uh, even if you sell cctvs you have to have a license as well yes and there's uh, various categories of licenses that is uh, given out mm -hmm. once the Applicants are successful in uh, securing those licenses, and uh, there are various categories. One is the security master license, which is given to the companies, and under that we have the next category, which is the individual license, which is uh, given out to people who have a specific role in the security industry, like security consultants, mm -hmm. or security trainers, and oh. security equipment specialists. Mm -hmm. And then we have the provisional license, mm -hmm. and under the provisional license is what we uh, categorize and license security guards, okay. security supervisors, and right. technicians as well. So that's the three main categories of licenses that we have. Okay, so uh, maybe Simeone would like to continue from there, of um, adding on to what you've said, or you said everything? <laughs> So under the licenses, and mm -hmm. Simone would just like to take us through the different categories of licenses and how they apply, how people can apply for those licenses. Okay, yes, that will be good. Thank you, Simeone. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, actually, we have a, a checklist for all the different categories, like uh, security master license. Mm -hmm. um, they need to fill the form, and uh, they need to provide, uh, provide the company profile, the company business registration, mm. uh, FNPF uh, compliance the Ministry of Employment uh, 
compliance clearance, uh, finished work policy, and uh, that's uh, we've got a set in the list of the checklists which uh, we are happy to provide to the public, and it's also in our on our website. Okay, so that's good. You got a website too. Mm. One of the important things I wanted to mention was <laughs> that the security industry is. Uh, a very important industry to Fiji, and uh, Fiji recognizes that as its importance towards the economy as well. There are various companies that operate out there, and there are many people that are employed in the security industry in various capacities. Yes. So it's a very important uh, industry for Fiji. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it also becomes very important to regulate and license this industry because of the importance it plays. Now, for example, we now have shopping malls that we didn't have before. So we now have private security engaging in public domain. Yes. So that's an important area to manage as well. So when you say private security, what's the difference between a private one and uh, just a, a security guard working under company? The private security industry refers to anything and everything that is in the private sector. Right. Uh, the Act is ex exempts uh, certain industries. For example, the Fiji Police Force is managed under its own act, which is the Fiji Police Force Act. Right. And then you have the Border Security Officers, which is uh, the Customs Officers. Uh, they have their own legislation that governs them. Then you have the FRCS staff and uh, immigration personnel. Mm -hmm. So they have their various legislation. So those people are exempted under this uh, regulation or under this act, the Security Industry Act 2010. So we do not manage them. Oh, yes. Whom okay. we manage and whom we regulate are people employed in the private sector. So engaged in any yes. kind of security activities, whether it's to provide guard services, whether it's to provide uh, alarm services, and whether it's to provide bodyguard services and things like that. Okay. All right. So what does uh, the security licensing and a registry registration board do? There's a number of things that the board does, and the uh, various activities is uh, clearly stipulated in the act as well, and uh, that's where we uh, get our uh, powers. And one of the things that we do is uh, we check, and we have the various staff to check the various aspects of the application that comes in. We monitor and advise on the regulation of the security industry and um, we also inquire into and decide upon complaints against a holder of a security master license as well. The primary role is to consider and determine applications uh, for the grant of security licenses. We also have an advisory role where we advise the minister on any matters concerning the security industry or the operation of this act referred to it by the minister. And uh, we also make recommendations to the minister as well, and we consult with the minister on the review of this uh, uh, particular act as well. So that's some of the uh, role, uh, the responsibilities that we have as the Security Industry Licensing Board. Mm -hmm. One of the critical areas is when we are vetting application, it becomes very, very important to ensure that the service provider to whom we are going to grant that particular license to has complied with all the stipulated requirements. All right, so we'll come back uh, with that, the requirements uh, that you're talking about uh, on uh, Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you a lot for your company. And if you happen uh, to be listening in and uh, you'd like uh, to ask a question, whatever it is, you can call 3220906. So uh, it is interesting that uh, we do have, uh, you know, you working as a board member for the uh, Security Industry Licensing and Registration Board, Daniel. And uh, you're just going through all, uh, you know, all the licenses that you have to overlook and you say that you need re requirements that need to be followed as well. Maybe you'd like to explain the requirements uh, for licenses. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, one of the critical areas, as I mentioned earlier, is that the security industry is uh, quite an important industry for Fiji. 
and we understand its impact to the economy as well. And therefore, it becomes very, very important to understand that when we do undertake any of these activities, it's done responsibly. Everyone has the freedom to start their businesses in this mm -hmm. country. And with that freedom comes responsibility. Yes. And the responsibility is to ensure that you are compliant in all aspects of uh, the various regulations that govern your particular activity or your mm -hmm. business. So it also puts uh, pressure on the various individuals who have decided to go into any business activity as part of the various due diligence to ensure that they have done the required research to know what is required for them to undertake that particular business activity. And in this case, we are discussing the security activities for the business. So, for example, in the retail industry, if you are employing security guards as part of your staff, then you are required to secure a security master license. And the okay. same thing applies for any other company as well, for the resorts as well. Mm -hmm. So if you are privately engaging security guards, the requirement is to engage and to have a security master license until or unless you contract out services to a master license holder. So that's the other option that's available to people. I see. So that is uh, if uh, for me, instant, for instance, I wanted to run a security business, how much would I have to pay for the license? And we'll ask uh, Simeone to take us okay. through the uh, yes, license please. fees. Simeone, if I wanted to open a security business. Uh, for the security, security master license, uh, the fees is um, for, they need to pay uh, an application fees for 47391. Okay. And your application will be go to the board mm -hmm. for whether they will approve or they will. <laughs> okay, right. Um, once it is approved, we need to pay the issuance fees of uh, one five six thirty nine hundred fifty six dollars thirty nine cents, mm -hmm. and uh, activity fees of forty seven dollars thirty nine cents. Okay, that's not uh, much at all. <laughs> this is for the security companies. Companies, for, yes. So for once the companies. companies have been given or issued with a security master <laughs> license, mm -hmm. then it is on the companies to ensure that the employees also are licensed adequately as required under this act. Okay, so they have the master license plus the, the security officers that work under them need to get their licenses as well. So the company does that for them. Or do, I mean... So there is the other category, which is the provisional license for security guards mm -hmm. and security uh, supervisors, mm -hmm. as well as for security patrol officers. So these are the various... And it also includes the monitoring staff. So if, if you operate as a security company, you have a monitoring uh, service mm -hmm. where you're monitoring alarm systems or your personnel, then those operators also need to be licensed. So anybody and everybody in this security industry or who undertake any aspect of the security activities mm -hmm. are required to be licensed. Okay, do you think that um, the, a lot of people are aware of the requirements and uh, of course, you know, being licensed? Do we have uh, people following, following the law? Uh, thank you, ma'am. For the past five years, the, the ministry have done its part, like uh, enforce um, uh, the, we have uh, like the enforcement or monitoring, um, yes. monitoring, and we have done awareness through. Oh, okay, awareness, um, yes. In the dailies and uh, also the talkback shows, the one that we have, like similarly the one that we've done. Right. And uh, unfortunately, most of these companies they uh, do not uh, come to the uh, to the ministry for further consultation with this. I mean, you just need to do it legally. It doesn't cost that much, does it? <laughs> yes. Uh, at this stage, I would like to make a <laughs> humble appeal and mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to encourage everybody mm -hmm. out there who's uh, engaged in various security activities to ensure that with that freedom to undertake those activities comes responsibility to ensure that mm -hmm. you are compliant with the stipulated regulations enforced in the country. Okay, so if uh, someone is not doing what they are supposed to do, what uh, powers do you have uh, to so the act is very them. so the act is very clear. Mm. The act is very clear in terms of the various uh, penalties that exist. And just to summarize, we have uh, penalties for different categories. But in summary, for individuals, the fines go up to five thousand okay. dollars, and for companies, uh, up to thirty-five thousand dollars. Again, it depends on which category of offense. 
that you have been cited. Okay, so for instance, how could you find out? Uh, someone to report it to you? or? Well, that's one aspect is to, and to receive a report. Mm -hmm. and the other aspect is where we now engaging more is to be a little bit proactive on our part right. and to see what are the activities that people are engaged in. Personally, mm -hmm. uh, Louis, I just wanted to mention that I've visited a couple of companies already mm. and I've encouraged them to become compliant, mm -hmm. uh, including bouncers as well. And uh, I've been to some of the other companies and I have explained the scenarios and situations. Simeone and the rest of the staff at the security division are happy to assist anyone who wants to be compliant. So if you do not understand anything about the licensing process, mm -hmm. feel free to talk to the staff at the security division of the Ministry of Defense and National yes. Security. Mm -hmm. Feel free to talk to any of the board members as well mm -hmm. and we'll be happy to assist you to become compliant. Yes, we understand there are challenges. Mm -hmm. We also understand that there may be times and moments when people may not necessarily understand the process that is involved. We're happy to take you through that process. See, there you go, very nicely. And we'll be back shortly on Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the <coughs> classic hits. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Great to have your company and my guest right now, the licensed security consultant and member of the security industry licensing and registration board, Daniel Singh, as well as Simeone Nakola from the security division of the Ministry of Defense and National Security. Now, Simeone, you said there's a challenge uh, with people being compliant, you know, in getting licenses. Now, uh, what, uh, how many are actually compliant? Uh, do you have uh, like a, a, maybe an estimation of uh, uh, people who are being compliant with the licensing? Uh, at the moment, we have uh, 11 security master license companies that are compliant to the, to the act at the moment. Okay, so 11, that's 11 not many. Uh, <laughs> but okay, carry on. And uh, roughly, our with uh, data that uh, provided by the registration of companies, it's about uh, about uh, 215 security companies that were registered with them. Okay, so you mean to say that 250 registered and only 11 have their licenses? Is that right, or am I got that wrong? <laughs> uh, th these 11 is, are from the that are registered with the Ministry of Defense and National Security. Oh, okay. So right. what that means is that mm -hmm. that's the number of companies that has been issued with uh, the security master license. Master license to run the and, company. And uh, now having said that, in all fairness to the rest of the people, mm -hmm. there were companies that have previously registered and secured the master license over mm -hmm. the many years, so from 2010 onwards, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them have not gone through the renewal process. So we also encourage them to come up and uh, ensure that their master licenses are renewed as well. Okay, so when you say renewed, uh, how often uh, does it get renewed? The licenses, I mean, for depending on uh, which license we're talking it's about. For security master license, that's for the company. It's uh, yep. renewed for, they apply for our first year and mm -hmm. then renewed for three years. Okay, so uh, that's fair enough. So first time you apply? First time. One year. Okay. Your license will be granted for one year if and only if you have met all the requirements, and I will state that later what the requirements are. And uh, secondly, in terms of the, um, uh, and after that you go for a renewal, and then you are given a renew renewal for up to three years. Now that is always at the discretion of the board. So yeah. there are various factors that we also consider and look at. Now, mm -hmm. for example, some of the key, key criteria that we look at is mm -hmm. that your company must be properly registered, Mm -hmm. You must have uh, compliance from agencies like FRCS. You must have compliance from FNPF, Ministry of Employment, and um, you, your directors should be cleared by, should have police credence for the directors. And then companies are also required to submit uh, the list of shareholders and directors as well. We need to know all that to understand who are all engaged or who are all associated with those organizations. 
in terms of security activities. As you know, security is a very sensitive subject and mm -hmm. we need to understand all these things. Okay, so yeah, very nicely. All you need to do is just get in touch with the uh, Ministry of Defence, um, obviously from where you are as well, Daniel. Yep, the Security Industry Licensing and Registration Board. So uh, just uh, looking uh, at uh, the individual um, license, that's uh, the provisional one, yep. right? That's for just uh, you, for you to become a security guard, is that right? So the individual license is for the specialists in the area. Mm -hmm. It includes uh, those who are security consultants like myself. Okay. And it includes uh, security trainers, uh, security equipment specialists, and um, so that's the for individual. Mm. Then for the provisional license, the provisional license is issued out to the various uh, security guards, security supervisors, uh, patrol officers, monitoring staff, and technical staff. Okay, so how do you give those licenses? I mean, are they, uh, how much does it cost? So at first you apply for a master license, which is okay. applied for, for the by company. the company. Right. Once the company secures the master license, mm. then the responsibility goes to ensure that all the staff okay, are, uh, have got the required licenses. So when a security guard is issued with a provisional license, mm -hmm. it will clearly state that it's under supervision of this particular master license. Right, I got it. So yeah. when you secure a master license, you also have a burden of responsibility to mm -hmm. ensure that the various activities undertaken by your personnel mm. are in compliance to all stipulated regulations. Right. And also that people operate ethically as well. So we will look at the policies of the organization as well. Mm. And one of the key policies that we look at, which is enshrined in the Act, is the uh, fitness for work policy. Okay. So that's one of the key requirements. Uh, fitness for work policy is we want to make sure that companies who engage personnel for security purposes have got the checks and balances in place to ensure that the various personnel reporting to work mm -hmm. are in absolute sound condition to make those judgments and undertake those actions as required when situations do arise. Sure. So, for example, you are protecting life. Mm -hmm. so they need to make sure that they have been adequately trained and they have the required knowledge and they have the required attitude to be able to preserve life when the need arises and also to protect and prevent loss when it's required. Exactly. I mean, you just don't want to be hiring any old body. You need to, like you said, have all um, the skills to be a uh, whatever security guard or be able to run a security company. So the eligibility of uh, granting a license? So the eligibility for granting master license, and I'll just ask uh, probably Simi to take us through the eligibility of uh, granting of security master license. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a checklist that we have and the staff at uh, the Ministry of Defense will be able to assist with. Mm -hmm. See me. <coughs> so normally you just, um, you know, you have a checklist. Yeah, we, ha we have a checklist. Mm. So what does the... About the 15... Uh, so there's a lot. lot. I mean, well, at least you can mention a few. You don't have to mention them all. Uh, they need to complete a, an application form. Mm -hmm. Um. They need to provide company registration, uh, tax compliance from FIRCA, okay. compliance letter from uh, FNPF and also the employment. So mm -hmm. in summary, anybody mm -hmm. applying for a security master license must ensure that they are completely in compliance to all stipulated regulations that affect the business activity in Fiji. Right, uh, to be run uh, professionally. Absolutely. Because, as you said, I mean, you know, security protects lives. And also, what about the risks um, security officers take as well, trying to protect properties and uh, businesses as well? It's a huge risk. And uh, at this stage, I wish to acknowledge all those who have been involved in uh, security work and all the security officers out there. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the board, I wish to thank them. Mm. And we appreciate the activities in keeping our homes, our communities, our various businesses safe. So mm. we appreciate that. Mm. Having said that, uh, we also need to ensure that everyone is compliant to the law. Okay, so are you going to be doing some monitoring uh, soon? There is a process. Or investigation, I may call it, uh, to make sure that everyone's being compliant? 
So there's various processes that uh, the staff at the ministry undertake, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure Simi will be happy to talk about those things. Yes, please, Simi, very quickly. Um, in consultation with uh, the Security Industry Board, we we just do our planning. If we like, we will visit uh, the security companies and security personnel. Yes. Okay. And so some so of the you, you just visit and talk very nicely. You have to do assessments as well. <laughs> and one of the key activities that will be coming up in the near future as part of the plans for the board will be to also undertake awareness programs in different divisions as well. Okay. And also to undertake uh, field visits of various companies. So after the license is given, mm. then comes the monitoring and evaluation phase. Okay. So we need to also have, we need to ensure that there's processes in place that will ensure that the activities are constantly monitored mm -hmm. and evaluated against. Yes. So just getting a license does not mean that you are now free to do anything and anything, For the but rest it of means the that yes. you have to abide by the stipulated regulations that uh, is clearly stipulated under the Security Industry Act 2010. Yes, uh, we wouldn't want to be seeing people paying uh, that hefty fine, would we? There is a lot of, again, it's all about choices. So in life, everyone is given the freedom to make a choice. Mm -hmm. It depends upon which choice you make. So either you are rewarded or you are reprimanded for the choices that you make. Similarly, in this case, the regulation allows you to make the choice. The choices, for example, in terms of uh, whether you want to be compliant mm -hmm. or non-compliant. If non-compliant, of course, there is a fines and also imprisonment for the directors responsible. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Simeone? Um. Yeah, we are the ministry is happy to help the, the public for the for getting the license mm. and uh, security division is um, always uh, like from Monday to Friday uh, we open from 8 to 4 30 mm -hmm. and even lunch hours and so the dedicated staff with the division can help uh, the public uh, getting the security industry Yes, yeah, so just very quickly, I mean, uh, we're just about to end the segment. Uh, why is it important? Uh, what would you tell a person who has a master license uh, be you know, compliant? Well, the importance of we have to understand why regulations are put in place. What is the intent of the legislation? In the intent was to ensure that there is an orderly fashion in which all security activities is undertaken within the sovereignty of Fiji mm -hmm. and within its jurisdiction. So having said that, we need to ensure that our citizens, whether they are engaging in security activities or whether they wish to go get into the security business, mm -hmm. yes, it's important that they do that for their livelihood. Mm -hmm. but it's also important that we undertake those activities in a responsible manner. And that's why these regulations are there to ensure that we safeguard those. And it's also for the protection of all our stakeholders. Yes, exactly. And uh, we'll be back soon on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you a lot for your company. And uh, we have uh, our another guest. Well, he's not a stranger to us. We've had him many times before. Very important person. And he's from the Ministry of Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relations, the Director of Labor Standards Service, Atish Kumar. Welcome to Speak Your Mind. Okay, well, it's good to have you. And it's great to have the both of you together as well as uh, Daniel who is a member of the Security Industry Licensing and Registration Board. So now we will talk about the challenges of the security industry. So, I mean, you would know best, uh, Atish, maybe the most complaints that uh, you get uh, involved in this industry. Thank you, Luis. Yes, I think uh, it's very important for us to uh, emphasize on the number of complaints that we receive eh? uh, from the security uh, guards, uh, those who are employed in the industry, and those who are no longer employed, but they also lodge a complaint with the Ministry of Employment. Now, working with the Ministry of uh, Defense, also with the Security Industry Board, what we have seen is we have brought some standards mm -hmm. uh, through the Security Industry Act 2010. Uh, there is a standard in place now for security security guards. Uh, I think prior to the act coming into force, 
people were basically looking at security industry as a one industry where people can just go and work. But I think uh, through the efforts of the Ministry of Defense or the efforts of the Ministry of Employment and all other agencies, we're trying to bring a standard in place. And of course, that is uh, also very important for us to understand that when you bring a standard, standard also has requirements. And of course, the uh, Ministry of Defense is going through these requirements process for them, for the security operators to have a master license in place. Now, Luis, uh, we also need to look at the fact that when you employ a security guard, it's important that you pay them the minimum rates of uh, pay. Eh? Yes. I think there is a challenge that we have in place. And of course, the Ministry of Employment working together with the Ministry of Defense, we are trying to ensure that those security guards who are employed by the security companies mm. are actually able to pay to get the right remuneration. So and how much is, is it? And now yes, what's yes, the hourly rate the for current, security guards? The uh, hourly rate is $2.68 an hour. That's the uh, minimum. 268 eh? minimum, yes. right. But the employer can pay above that. Uh, yes. And what we have seen is, uh, some of the companies they do pay above this minimum rate and we encourage them mm -hmm. and of course we thank those companies eh, mm -hmm. who are actually paying above the minimum rate but there are also companies who are paying below the minimum rate and that is where mm -hmm. we are coming in uh, from the ministry of employment and mm -hmm. Ministry of defense uh, uh, in terms of enforcement section we are coming in to ensure that these companies are taken to task who don't comply with the minimum rates of pay eh? yes. because the rates has been there mm -hmm. and of course the rates has been uh, in place uh, for longer time we also have the rates that has been amended uh, from the total of 41 cents and of course the Gary rates went up to 251 mm -hmm. and of course now to 268. Yes. What we have seen is that basically these companies who don't comply with the with the minimum rates, mm -hmm. we go and investigate these companies. And we have seen a, a lot of security companies have been investigated. We have also taken security companies to court, mm -hmm. the employment tribunal. We are taking companies to the employment tribunal who those who don't comply, mm -hmm. who those um, who don't pay the minimum rate of pay. And we also want to um, advise the security companies that if they have any problem, they should visit the Ministry of Employment, discuss the cases with us rather than just running away or hiding and not paying the workers the right wages. Because if that happens, Ministry of Employment is going to come hard on those security companies who don't comply with the minimum terms and conditions. And we are working together with our colleagues from Ministry of Defense to ensure that those companies who violate the law mm. are taken to task. What we have seen, Louis, also is uh, a lot of times we see that security companies, they don't have proper wages and time record. That is essential for any business. Mm. If you have any, a worker mm. working for you, and I'm appealing to all the businesses, including the security companies, mm. they must have proper wages and time record. Mm. Only when you have proper wages and time record, when you have proper FNPF record, it will be easy for you to bring up those records to the Ministry of Employment in case you want a uh, compliance letter. Now, uh, as uh, my colleague, Mr. Singh, has already alluded in terms of the requirements of uh, the compliance letter. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ministry of Employment also needs to give a compliance letter mm -hmm. to Ministry of Defense that this particular security company has complied. For example, security company X and Y, they want to comply with the, the uh, they want to apply for master license. They will go to the relevant agencies, FNPF, FRCS, Ministry of Employment, and other relevant authorities to ensure that they actually get the uh, uh, master license that, that is through the compliance letter. So what actually happens, Louis, is if in a situation they don't have a compliance letter, then of course Ministry of Defense or the Security Industry Board will not consider the application for um, the master license because they have not met the requirements. Okay. From the Ministry of Employment point of view, I think, Louis, is very important. We emphasize that companies must comply with the minimum terms and conditions with the Employment Relations Act in terms of annual leave, sick leave, bereavement leave, maternity leave, family care, on the leaves, including FNPF. Very true. On uh, Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. We'll be back in a bit. your mind on gold fm only the classic hits i'm louise county seller our guest in the studio right now with us the member of the security board member rather of the security industry licensing and registration board daniel singh and uh, also our friend the director of labor standard service atish kumar who has clearly letting you know that uh, if you have a master license and you're running a security company it's very important uh, to be paying your security guards, a proper wage, and uh, everything else. The leave, like you mentioned, 
And uh, I mean, I believe they work for 12 hours straight, right? Most of them. Yes, I think, Louise, uh, the Employment Relations Act has two bands of hours of work. If you are working for uh, five days, you'll be working for nine hours per day. If you are working for six days, you'll be working for eight hours per day. However, okay. the employer mm. can employ guards, for example, in a situations where they want the guard to be there for 12 hours, they can have that, mm -hmm. provided they pay them the overtime. And this is where I think uh, a lot of complaints come in because companies fail to pay overtime. And that's where our ministry steps in okay. to investigate. And we have got cases where companies have not paid overtime and they have uh, rushed at guards straight for 12 hours and uh, the meal allowance and other dues are not paid. Mm. We also encourage and we want security guards and for security companies to know that FNPF uh, contribution is from day one. So if mm. you are going to employ any security guard or any worker for that matter, you have to contribute in terms of the FNPF payments. Mm -hmm. And we also encourage security guards, they can visit the nearest uh, FNPF office, they can check their contribution, and of course if there is uh, no contributions coming in, they can lodge their complaint uh, through the FNPF um, uh, offices to ensure that they actually investigate. Yes, because they need they to be educated exactly. because, uh, yes. I mean, you can't uh, keep yeah. carrying on like that. Right. From the board's perspective, this has been a major challenge mm. in terms of... Uh, the vetting process that we go through of uh, various uh, companies that are applying for security master license and they are non-compliant in that area mm. and it is of great concern to mm. both the security industry licensing and registration board mm. as ministry of defense as well as the ministry of employment mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of companies are non-compliant in this area mm. now, having said that uh, there are many issues that uh, plaques the industry we understand that one of the key areas that we have identified is the ability to manage a security business successfully. We have discovered there are many people who are unable to do their task, so they lack the knowledge. They have the intent to engage in security activities, but they lack the ability to understand the business aspects of running a business. Yes. And that's where a lot of people need to be upskilled, trained, and this knowledge needs to be provided to them. And uh, therefore, that for those uh, people out there, we encourage them to also go out and uh, upskill yourselves as well and ensure mm. that you understand the business. For us, when we grant the uh, master license, we need to ensure that people to whom we are granting the license are absolutely competent to be able to manage those security activities. Yes, and manage them properly, give them their due wages, just like Atish is saying. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, a number of companies and a lot of companies are non-compliant at this stage. Mm. And we are encouraging them to become compliant quickly. Yes. Okay, so uh, we've spoken about uh, some of the complaints. Uh, you have... Um, raised quite a few. Is there any other that you'd like to um, raise, uh, Atish? Thank you, Luis. Yes, I think uh, the other point that we are trying to make here is uh, security companies also need to ensure that their workers, the guards, have the employment contract. That's very important. And mm. I'm re-emphasizing in terms of the wages and time record. Mm -hmm. So you need to know exactly what time your guard came in. Right. Where is the location? And uh, how long will the guard work? And of course, the change in shift. We are encouraging them but if you're in any situation, if you have an issue in terms of the guard, you must discuss with them. Mm. And we are encouraging this through uh, the process of um, LMCC, the Ministry of Employment also uh, emphasized on LMCC. Those uh, employees who have 20 workers and more, mm -hmm. they can form an LMCC committee. It talks about productivity. So in a holistic way, Luis, what we're trying to look at is compliance. At the same time, we raise the productivity profile of the organization. Yes, and just and another yes. thing is, um, do these um, master licensing companies train their security guards as well or give them a certificate for some kind of trainings? So a number of companies <coughs> uh, undertake uh, what we call the internal training mm -hmm. and they have the internal certifications that they go through. So do they actually get the certificate? They, it's done in-house. Most of the in -house. training is done in-house. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, the training of security is also an area that the board regulates as well. The Fiji Higher oh. Education Commission has, uh, in their role, has come up with the national standards for security training. Okay. So they have already released the certificate two, three, and certificate four 
in security operations for Fiji. See, that'll be good if uh, when you have a certification, you know, you're recognized and, uh, you know, you can get a good security guard job. <laughs> and there are various training institutions that has expressed interest to undertake those training. Mm -hmm. And currently we are considering some of those uh, applications as well. Good. Uh, we are looking at the syllables. We are looking at uh, what uh, will be part of the training and what kind of knowledge will be given to our security personnel. Mm -hmm. So once we've gone through all that process, then we'll be approving and vetting those uh, training providers accordingly. Okay, so uh, who will foot the bill? Will it be the company, the one with the master license for the trainings, or does the uh, individual foot the bill in more herself? The training is everyone's responsibility. Okay. It becomes, uh, for me, if I'm engaged in an activity, I, on a, in a, on a personal level, I mm -hmm. want to know, and I, w I would like to upskill myself to be able to undertake that activity. So yes. that's my primary responsibility. Okay. The employer also has a responsibility and to ensure that when they engage personnel, that they are absolutely competent to be able to undertake that activity. Right. Now, in this case, there are various security activities that uh, we manage. So that becomes very, very important. And that brings me to the next uh, issue, which is when, as a board, when we look at uh, the various applications, mm -hmm. we also look at the competency level of personnel. Mm -hmm. So we have to really, really understand that these guys are equipped with the right amount of knowledge and expertise to be able to undertake the work that they need to undertake. And I'd like to bring an example here. For example, if you're playing rugby, and if you engage in a tackle, you have to bring the opposing player down gently so to say in <laughs> as far as your duty of care is concerned to the other person similarly in a security activity if you are stopping an illegal activity or if you have engaged in a, a scenario where a security breach has occurred then the burden of responsibility is also to preserve the other life as well okay. so these are the things that we have to ensure the primary role is to always preserve life and then prevent mm -hmm. loss and protect property Exactly. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, this uh, has uh, almost come to an end. Uh, just very quickly again, Atish, what would you like to highlight before Thank we you. finish? Thank you, Bruce. Yes, I think uh, I'm encouraging all security companies. Please, our inspectors are out in the field. Mm -hmm. They will be talking to you. They will be advising you how to keep wages in time record, how to remunerate your workers. Please ensure that you talk to our ministry, you talk to our colleagues from Ministry of Defense, so that you are able to obtain your master license. We will be only advising those companies that are actually not uh, uh, complying. We will be going hard on them to ensure that they comply. And I'm also encouraging security guards. They can visit our nearest Ministry of Employment Office to lodge their complaint if they see that they are not paid the right wages. Yes, exactly. I mean, don't be scared. Uh, your office yes. is here in Suva. And from the Security Industry Licensing and Registration Board, yes, mm -hmm. the personnel at the Security Div Division of the Ministry of Defense are available. Mm -hmm. People can call in uh, uh, 321621, so that's the number to call, and mm -hmm. uh, somebody will assist you, uh, whoever is manning that phone. And also, we want to encourage everyone to mm -hmm. get compliant quickly Yes, and not to f uh, face the brunt of um, enforcement. And uh, so that when we do undertake these activities, we want to make sure that we've given them the burden of responsibility. We've fulfilled our burden of responsibility, but we've also allowed people to adjust according to the time that they have based on the expertise that they have as well. Yes. So we have allowed that to happen as well. Having said that, it's important for all these companies out there, anybody who's engaged in security activities, please ensure that you become compliant, you obtain your required master license, individual licenses, and provisional licenses and we are there to help you to secure it. Thank you very much uh, the uh, security industry board member the licensing and registration board Daniel Singh and uh, also the director of labor standards uh, service from the Ministry of Employment Productivity and Industrial Relations Atish Kumar who has also said uh, to stand up for your rights the office is just here in Suva if uh, you're a security guard and you have any complaints. On Speak Your Mind, that's it for now. Until next week, Nisa Modemanda. <laughs>